Summary of In the Penal Colony by Franz Kafka The officer's attention is on the machine that is used to kill criminals in the penal settlement, even though the people who live there don't seem too interested. The prisoner who is about to be killed is being watched over by a soldier, who watches as the officer describes the nature of the machinery and the techniques of execution to the explorer, who is a guest to the penal colony. The explorer's reputation and fame come from the fact that he is from the West and had his education in Europe. In the tropical heat, the officer tells a quick history of the prison colony. He talks about the old commandant, who he thinks perfected society on the penal colony by inventing the machinery and making the officer his right-hand man. As the officer talks about the parts of the machine in more depth, the explorer's excitement grows. Even the prisoner moves to get a better look at the complicated machine that will write his sentence on his skin in the end. The explorer interrupts the officer's long description of the machine by asking about the prisoner's hearing and punishment. The officer is angry that the new commandant didn't explain his methods to the guest, which was something the old commandant always did. He says the prisoner is never told what he did wrong, instead, the machine writes the sentence on his body right before he dies. Since the officer is also the judge of crimes, he thinks that any kind of defense is just putting off the unavoidable. He thinks that anyone who is charged of a crime is therefore guilty. The longer the officer talks about how the machine works, the more uncomfortable the explorer feels with the system of justice and the cruel way of executing people, which seems more and more silly as the officer gives more and more details about the machine. The traveler starts to feel bad that he even saw the killing, but he calms himself down by saying he has no right to change the way people on the island live their lives. As the prisoner is being put on the machine, the officer tells the traveler that he needs help to keep this authoritarian system of justice going and to keep using the machine. The new commandant doesn't seem to like this kind of justice system. Instead, he or she would rather hold talks that anyone can attend. The officer hopes that the traveler will make a case for the old commandant's way of doing things, and that the new commandant will realize that he has been wrong. The explorer says that he can't back the officer, even though he won't stop the current execution, and he can't tell the new commandant that the machine is the right way to do justice. When the officer hears this, he quietly lets the prisoner go and tells him he can go free. He then writes his own sentence, puts it into the machine, takes off his clothes, and sits on the machine. The traveler watches and agrees that the officer's deeds show how strongly he believes in what he does. The cop thinks that he has broken the law by not doing his job because he can't keep the old order. As the officer dies, the machine breaks down in front of the explorer, the soldier, and the prisoner. Even though they don't want to, they do try to save the officer from the broken machine which is now brutally killing its target instead of torturing them slowly. After the officer dies, the traveler goes to the tea house to see the grave of the old commandant. The headstone says that he will return to the prison colony someday. The traveler gives some money to a group of dock workers before leaving the tea house and going to a boat that will take him to his ship. The soldier and prisoner follow, but the traveler doesn't let them get on the boat with him. Instead, he leaves them on the island. About the author. Franz Kafka was born in Prague in 1883 into a Jewish middle-class family. Throughout his life, Kafka strongly identified with the intellectualism, faith, and dedication to learning that were part of his Jewish background. However, he was culturally German. Kafka's life was mostly about his bond with his father and how he dealt with sadness and social anxiety. He never got married, even though he had three different girlfriends, and he felt alone his whole life because he couldn't talk to other people or God. After getting a law degree from Charles University of Prague in 1906, Kafka went to work for the government. Even though his co-workers liked him, he hated this job, and it hurt his physical and mental health. In 1917, he was told he had cancer, and he had it until he died in 1924. Kafka had strong doubts about his work, so he didn't print many of his stories during his lifetime. He also asked that his work be destroyed, but his close college friend and manager of his estate, Max Broad, ignored this request because he knew how important Kafka's work was. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. 
please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.